Shout out to Real Tune, man. East to the West, best of the best. October 29th, Top Dollar West Month Festival. Yes, sir. Hey, Real Tune, it's the real money in the room. The best East to the West. Man, we up there, uh, top float, man. My boy Tune got to set up real nice, real nice hospitality, man. East to the West, best of the best, October 29th. If you ain't heard, you need to figure out what's going on in Dallas, Texas, October 29th at the Top Dollar Westmont Festival. The 30 Rich Dog Show, Car Show, Concert, man. We doing this shit. Yeah, man. Um, I, I figured since it was Top Dollar business, you know, we was going to be top flow. Yeah, yeah, no business. place. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Man, um, well, 30, before we get into anything, I wanted to uh, speak about the dog show that you have coming up. Um, and the first question that I have, not to just pry too much, but how much money did you spend on this show? About four, about four, five hundred. Four, five hundred? Like, like hundred or like? Four, five hundred thousand. Four, you, you spent four, five hundred thousand on the show? Just on the show. Like, is that, what, what is that, the venue? The venue, the artist, the decoration, the setup, the booths. Um, the, the banners, the promotion. That's half a million rate. dollars on the show. Just on the show. Okay, why did you spend so much on the show? Usually, um, especially with dog shows, I think people cap it around 100000 200 You know what I'm saying? I did that because I didn't want to just do a dog show. I wanted to do everything all inclusive and, you know, include different cultures of people. I wanted to include the... The, the 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 fans of music i want to include different kinds of animals i want to include people that want to eat food people that got cars so in order to do it and do it right and do it nice it's, it, it costs you know what i'm saying and i didn't want to just i had to do backup plans i had to pay extra promoters i had to pay extra radio promo i had to pay extra stuff in case somebody don't do their job or somebody don't do something right or somebody don't show up we still got extra artists, we still got extra dogs, we still got extra cars, we still got extra rappers, we still got extra everything. Still got extra security. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be super security there. Okay. Police, you know, well, supervisors. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh metal detectives. You know, okay, okay, I'll, okay, okay. The audio staging. The because staging see, see it, is, it is a difference, and I, I've noticed this. I wasn't gonna go this direction, but with, with black dog shows, you don't see metal detectives. But when I went to when, when I went to, um, which this, you know, they did have Maui and them on the, um, on the roster for um, the, fr I think it was the Frenchie Bowl. Maui, like that. The, it was. Um, they had their own King show Kong too. Them, you know what I'm they saying? They had their own show too. Justin them had threw a show one time in Cleveland, I think. Yeah. Is that the show you're talking about? That's wanted? not the one I'm talking about. It was That's one, the Frenchie It was Bowl. like last year. Yeah, the I, th I think it was the Frenchie Bowl. It might have been before the Frenchie Bowl, after the Frenchie Bowl. That motherfucker Bowl. was nice. It was nice. It was a great setup. It was very professional. Um, shout out to, uh, man, I've been out the dog game for so long. King Kong owner, though. Uh, envious Frenchies um, in Envy Maui. I believe envious it was Envious Frenchie. Maui. Yeah. Look, the Maui owner is customizing the car for the car show. Envious Frenchies bringing out. Uh, McLaren and Lamborghini and they got mo cars that they bring into the festival too so these breeders that you name in the big name breeders they got they got cars and they're gonna be bringing them to the show I might they might have their cars at their booths so all the people that's been watching and tuning in and wondering about this dog money with this dog and the dog breeder lifestyles and dog dog dogs and what's going on you finna see it yeah so if I didn't spend that extra money, you wouldn't you wouldn't see it. So just tell us some of the special guests from the dogs, the cars, and the artist side. So that we can expect to see. I just hit I just school and bully camp just hit me. He got one of the craziest female bullies. Um, a lot of people that breed dogs are reaching out from all around the world, different states. Uh, Bora Bora breeders are, are reaching out. Somebody hit me from North Carolina. You got German shepherds. You got Rottweiler breeders. Bro Bro kennels from Dallas. They got about, they probably got 15, 20 dogs. They said they bring about 50 dogs, I guess, from other people that are part of their kennel. But they got the extreme Rockwallers. We'll be doing Rockwaller classes um, for trophies. And it was another breeder that hit me up. They wanted to do, like, uh, protection work. So at the festival, you will be able to see, like, some protection works. Okay, okay, As far okay. as the people that they ain't never seen a dog reach up and grab somebody on. Or, or, uh, as far as the artist, Sauce Walker's, hosting it, the car show, he bringing out his cars. Peso just made a video, Peso, Peso got uh, Lamborghini, uh, Escalade, 
uh, red Escalade, red Lamborghini. He got a red Durango, don't he? I don't know if it's a Durango track hawk. It's in that. It's a red. It's in that, it's it's a, in that realm. It's another car. Yeah. Sauce got, got so many Rolls Royces and Maybachs and 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 and, and all type Benzes. of different Benzes and um. He just made another video. He just bought an old school. Um. He said he's looking for some more old school. So I ain't no telling what they bringing out from Houston. People don't notice, but I also added Lil Jeremy too, and uh Big X the plug, uh D Baby performing also uh No Cap and Big Boogie. So, Unabinious. you got Turkey Leg Hood also coming too. Okay, Lens got Garage. Lens Garage also coming. He got, he got one of the nicest old schools I've seen. Uh, it's going to be a lot Coles, of. It's going to be a lot of butter, people on root beer actually. Root beer. The man got different kind of cars, bro. Yeah. You know he got so many cars I ain't even seen all of it. I just want to see it. You know I want to see the people come out and have a good time. That's why. That's why I invested so much into the show because it's not just about me it's not just about dogs bro it's a big world it's a lot of lost people out here that don't have nothing to do in dallas for worth it's super boring we don't do much we don't have much you know what i'm saying not yeah many. and I, I gotta give it to you here because that's one of the things that I, I get a lot of you know i have fun when i'm in dallas but i'm I, i'm here only for a good time not a long time yes sir and um when i am here though i don't see much to do you know what i'm saying like you do have a club scene here but outside of that, it's really not much for blacks to, you know what I'm saying, to get into, you know what I mean? And this, I feel like, is, is groundbreaking. It's definitely legendary. You know, if, any, if no one's called it legendary, just the pre-production work, I think. We ain't even got to the production or the post-production yet, but the pre-production work um, has been legendary. You know what I mean? And you definitely deserve your flowers um, doing this at such a young age. You know, most people wait till they're in their 40s to throw their first show let alone festival, you know what I mean? I didn't have to wait that long because I've been having a name out here since, since I was younger, you know what I'm saying? I never had a birthday party growing up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never had a birthday party. We wasn't able to have no birthday party. We barely was able to have fucking Christmas, you know what I'm saying, Thanksgiving. So this is also a gift to myself, you know, to see the community come out, you know, the people that I've been building relationships with. A lot of those people that I booked, and a lot of people that, that are coming to support are people that I've been knowing, you know what I'm saying? So I just I just did it to put a smile on everybody's face, you know what I'm saying? For people to with different brands and hair vendors and shoe vendors and clothing buildings, come out and, you know, build a relationship, you know, show your face where, you know, a lot of these people that's coming to listen to these music or to eat this food or to see these cars they never seen before. Ain't no telling what you might sell or who you might meet or what you gonna do there. So I, I, I invested so much into the event because I wanted to make it very profitable for everybody. You know what I'm saying? For all different businesses, brands, all different cultures of people, for Fort Worth and Dallas to come together, have a good time, you know what I'm saying? Be able to sit back, eat, laugh with each other. Because Fort Worth, we don't have nothing. And it's it's because the city is behind, it's small. Fort Worth is small and, 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 and us as black people, we don't have nobody to show us nothing. Our parents ain't used to having properties and uh, a lot of us ain't even used to having fair reunions. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of, like my family, I seen a lot of poverty. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm blessed to be here and I, and I had to go through a lot to get here. Uh, this is not normal. You know what I'm saying? None of my family ever have owned any property. None of my family ever has made any type of views from YouTube or sold any type of dog or animal for over a thousand or any, like, the stuff that I'm doing, the stuff that I'm putting together, is is nobody in Fort Worth ever done it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like somebody got to do it. I feel like the music scene for for Fort Worth is kind of boring also, and I feel like I'm the only one that can put this stuff together and try to help it. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though I still don't, I don't be dropping music. I'm still known for music. I can drop music at any minute, and it's, it's still gonna do numbers because the the person I am in the in the in the platform and the brand that I have. Um, let, let's actually take it from the top. Yeah. Um, so you're originally from Fort Worth. Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. Um, how was it growing up in Fort Worth, Texas? So growing up in Fort Worth, Fort Texas, Fort Worth. it was like a lot of people in Fort Worth, well, my family and the people that I grew up around and grew up with, they don't have much knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody trying to make it, you know what I'm saying? As far as the way I grew up, everybody trying to make it. So we not seeing a lot, we not doing a lot, we not going out, we not having fun. Like, and as I got older, 
Like I'm around, I'm around my cousin. I'm looking up to them. My 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 brother, my older brother, he stayed in Abilene. My other brother, older brother, he stayed with his with his dad's side of the family. My mama died when I was five. When my mama died. I had a younger brother. I got a younger brother. He probably he probably about five years younger than me. Probably about five years younger than me. How, how so, did that affect you? What? My mama dying? At five years old. Shit. I don't remember a lot of it, you know what I'm saying? But I remember some of it. But I feel like... I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how, I like... I don't know how, like, how my life would have been with her, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just glad that I have the father that I have to save me from from what I what I would have been, you know what I'm saying? Cause I would I would have been worse than this, and I wouldn't have been on this. My daddy took me away from the hood, you know what I'm saying? And um, he 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 raised me on the Southwest, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm not around a bunch of shit that I don't need to be around, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I was I'm I'm naturally different, you know what I'm saying? So I was always in trouble, you know what I'm saying? But my daddy taking me away and, and showing me a different way of different ways of living as far as my daddy a pastor, right? So I'm going to church, you know what I'm saying? And we picking up we picking up kids from every hood, you know what I'm saying? And I'm seeing the church people, you know what I'm saying? From my family, I'm seeing poverty people from the like cause after church we gotta go we gotta go right to these hoods because my family and them stay in these hoods. When they go pick up people from the projects, I gotta go to the projects later on, you know, during the week. So I'm 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 building relationships with the kids that's from the projects, you know what I'm saying? At the same time I'm growing up on the southwest. At the same time my family's from the south side on my daddy's side. At the same time my my family from Stop Six on my mama's side. So it's like I'm seeing a lot of different I'm seeing a lot of different types of people. So me being away from all the hood shit, all the negative shit, all the bullshit, I didn't get too much caught up in it or if I did I learned from it. I learned, hey, that's not what I need to be doing. A lot of people that stuck in the hood or grew up in the hood, they only know one thing. You know what I'm saying? They stuck in it. They don't see further. So me being on this side of town and me seeing different types of people, it, it brought different type of value. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm growing up, I had to learn how can I take advantage of being up, growing up with these side of, growing up on this side of town with these type of people. How can I get some money other than sitting over here selling crack? If my daddy didn't take me over there. I probably been stuck in the Hooverland. You know what I'm saying? If my mama, if my mama, see my mama had a job. My, what I remember, she worked at an airport or something. But we we really didn't have much. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it was straight. You know what I'm saying? I can say it was straight. You know I'm thankful for what I got, and I want much more. You know what I'm saying? And I would never got this vision if I didn't see what I seen. You know what I'm saying? You, you asked right. me how was it growing up. Growing up, I seen a lot and I done a lot. I had to learn a lot, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these people, these rappers that you be interviewing and interacting with, I know these niggas since kids. That's why a lot of them respect me, you know what I'm saying? I done seen them, I done been around them, I done did shit with a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? I done been into it with a lot of them niggas. But I had to just mature, you know what I'm saying? So, with me, with my daddy being a pastor, when I got in trouble, I always had to stay in the house. I'm on punishment or I'm going to alternative school. I graduated from alternative school. I saw um, in a song that you had put out called Money Laundering that um, 13 you went to Kimbo. Um, can you tell people what Kimbo is? Kimbo is a juvenile a juvenile detention center in Fort Worth. Uh, all the Fort Worth kids when they go to juvenile go to jail or something, that's where they go. Kimbo Road, it's on the north side. So I started going to Kimbo when I was 13. And I kept going to Kimbo for different shit, doing all type of shit. And it was like, I'm, I'm in jail by myself, you know what I'm saying? So I'm learning at the same time, like, this shit's stupid. My daddy been telling me this, but I had to see for myself that how dumb this shit is. And if you not separating yourself, say if you from the hood, you stay in the hood, you get in trouble. When you go back outside, them niggas still finna be outside. Or you finna see a lot, you don't have many options, you know what I'm saying? Me, when I get in trouble, the only way I can go outside is if I'm going to go cut a yard, going to go wash a car. I really probably can't leave the street. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just sitting here for I don't have no friends. I'm on the Southwest. And my neighborhood ain't nothing much. And this is before the Southwest was what it is today. 
I don't know what it was. I just know I was on that street by myself and I had to figure out a lot of shit by myself. I don't right. know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what was all going on. I heard that the Southwest been like that, been money over there, it been shit going on over there, but I'm stuck, you know what I'm saying? I can't leave this, but I'm back to back in trouble getting kicked out of school, I'm back to back. So it's like, I, as I'm sitting on that curb watching, I'm just watching shit, fool, and that's when I am start seeing these dogs and going to my auntie house, that's the only other way I could leave. I'm going to my auntie house, when I get there, I gotta go do whatever I wanna do. I can't do it at home, you know what I'm saying? I'm in trouble at home, only way I can leave the house is if I'm going to a relative house. And that's when I sneak off and go somewhere else or do something with my partners and be in all type of other bullshit. But I just had myself, fool. Uh, like I said, my brother, my, my other brother, he was younger than me. Other than that, I had two older sisters, you know what I'm saying? So I'm watching them, you know, with people coming over, you know what I'm saying, or different girls and all type of shit. But I'm, I'm fucked up, fool. I couldn't, I couldn't do shit much of nothing. And I had to sit and figure out a way for me to get money. When I go to my auntie house, them niggas get money. Them niggas doing all type of shit. So I gotta figure, I gotta go on this side of town and figure out a way for me to get this money. And then, I couldn't get what I want because my daddy and them, they didn't have much, you know what I'm saying? We were just blessed to be over there. So shit, when I'm in school, I gotta get into some bullshit or do some bullshit to get me something. Or I gotta ask these niggas to wear their clothes, my partners that I done met over here. So I just had to figure out a way for me to hustle if I wanted to get something. So shit, start selling dogs. Right, let's pause right there. At some point before you get to the dogs, you start rapping. Okay. I've been rapping since I was a kid though. That's what a lot of people don't know. Like, I've been freestyling. Music is a culture in Texas. Like, but everybody can't rap, you know what I'm saying? So I was just blessed with that talent, you know what I'm saying? Seeing around doing different stuff. I know Texas a while back, a lot of people was freestyling. That was that was normal, you know what I'm saying, right. for motherfuckers to freestyle. And I just like the music, so shit. We started freestyling, I started doing music. Next thing you know, I came out with a song, and it blew. What, what song was that? The Money Laundering song. And we, in Texas, think it blew. And we in Texas think we big, because we so far behind. Right. You know what I'm saying, like, Money Laundering. Money Laundering only hit a million views. That ain't shit, but to Fort Worth, it's so small, that's something. Well, it is something in Fort Worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a pretty big um, uh, milestone. And I feel like the time that it came out, when it came out, a lot of people weren't getting them views in Dallas. A lot of people weren't getting them views in Texas. In Houston. You in know Houston. What I'm outside of South Walker in at Texas. that time. Yeah, and I think what's so special about money laundering is, uh, yeah, from my perspective, you know, I was covering Fort Worth very heavy around that time. You know, oh, I was starting to. And I felt like, like I told you before, you just never get your credit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like niggas like me who covering the rap scene, we really focused on the beef. We focused on the drama. We focused on the, you know, the this kind of the scene beyond the music. Whereas 30 Rich coming, talking about getting to some money. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm not saying they don't get to money in Fort Worth. It's a lot of money getting to. But is people more so hear about the gang banging and the, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the this side, the that side. I, I, what led you to the realm of the money? I told you when I was young, I couldn't get what I want. You know what I'm saying? When I'm young, I'm around niggas that's hustling. So I've been hustling since I was a kid. When I was eight years old. I used to walk my neighborhood, mow grass for $20. You know what I'm saying? When I was fucking, 12, 11 years old, I'm at Aldi's taking baskets back for quarters. The quarters, you put the basket back and they give you the quarter, I'm collecting that shit. I'm going to go buy shit and sell shit. You know what I'm saying? I stayed in trouble, so I couldn't, so I'm in the middle of this shit, but right? But I'm I'm in trouble to where my partners and them, them niggas going to go fuck up shit and do shit. But I'm in trouble, I can't leave it. We, we young, you know what I'm saying? And when I do, I'm going to go get into some trouble and I'm taking my ass back to Kimbo. <laughs> So I'm learning this shit, like, I had to get the money to get what I needed and what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like, the crash dummy shit, that shit was just, wasn't getting us nothing, it was getting us respect. I got a lot of respect, you know what I'm saying, at a, at a young, early age, you know what I'm saying? So, it was getting us respect, but it wasn't it wasn't getting us what we wanted as far as like, like I'm walking, I'm walking my whole side of town from here to there to go do shit, or, or I'm in all type of bullshit, you know? So. I had to I had to figure out how to save my money. 
and I'm already used. Can't I'm not used to going nowhere and spending money. I'm not used to what regular niggas or these niggas used to or what they used to doing. So I have to save my money to to get where I want. And I don't, I'm not used to spending a lot of money. I don't need to spend a lot of money. I'm a regular nigga. My mama in there cooking. Shit, I'm gonna wear these same fucking clothes. If I do, I'm finna do something. Go buy me some clothes. But other than that, I'm finna save my money. So it wasn't never about. A lot of people get distracted and want to go buy shit. I don't want to buy nothing until I own it. I don't want to buy nothing un unless it's going to make me some more money. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of forward niggas, they can't talk about the money because they never, they never made the money. Because that was never their focus. You know what I'm saying? They run around playing with kids or doing a little, I got to get this money. You know what I'm saying? I got to get this money to get to where I got to go. You know, I graduated early, fool. When I graduated, I had to get the fuck out. And I can't be running around here freestyling and you doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta get the money. I already got the respect. The people already know me, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing this shit since been doing this shit. Let's fuck it. Let's sit back and save the money. Yeah, um in money laundering, you tell a story where you was like, um, y'all got pulled over in Arizona or somewhere with like seventy thousand cash and had to get out and walk. You know what I'm saying? When I had to get out and walk from the penitentiary. So it's me, it's me, this other guy named Samaj, and this, this guy from Come On Name, Duty. Uh, RIP Duty, Duty got, Duty got killed uh, not too long ago, but we go to, we on our way, you know, coming through New Mexico and going up north, you know what I'm saying, going up that way. We on our way, you know, to some opportunity. I saved up my money, you know, and I felt like I wanted to go up there and find something to invest in. I know I ain't shit here. Ain't nothing in Fort Worth, ain't nothing to do. So I'm finna go to where motherfuckers get money at and figure out how to get some money, you know what I'm saying? So we get pulled over. In Arizona, so you were going to Vegas. Right. We get pulled over. He searched the car, I had a warrant. I had just got off of, uh, I had just left court. I had a warrant. But I had just got, I had, I had just went to jail or something and I went to court. When I went to court, it was on a Friday. So we got pulled over like on a Saturday or Sunday. And uh, the warrant was still active. Uh, when I got out, I loaded up Kylie Neal, hey fool, you know, let's go. So we, we, on the, we on the road, we get pulled Soon over. Soon as. Gone, we gone. We gotta go. We ain't shit here. I'm instead of getting in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm sitting over here in the hood. We gotta go. We gone. Law pull us over. He tell duty. Get out the car. <laughs> he tell duty, get out the car. He duty awesomeized. And then uh he go talk to duty. And then he then he asked him who all in the car. He asked me for my ID. I'm thinking my warrant good. The warrant gone. I just left court. I think I'm on probation or some shit. I violated some 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 shit. I had a warrant. I just left court for something. So boom. I think I it was it was some bullshit, but boom. Uh, I give him my ID, he tell me I got a warrant. He like, step out the car, I ain't stepping out the car. He like, you know, you got a warrant, felony warrant. You know, I, they give me the right to get everybody out the car and search the car. So he going through the car, the trunk locked. The trunk got a key to lock it, right? Right. He don't know how to unlock the, he don't know how to unlock the trunk. He find the key to unlock the trunk and unlock it from the inside. Cause I had the trunk locked. He popped the trunk, he going through our clothes and shit. That nigga, he jumped. He jumped like, freeze, everybody, don't move, don't move. Duty and them like, what you talking about? Duty handcuffed. Duty handcuffed, I'm in the back of the car when I see him jump. Cause I'm the only one in the back of the car. These niggas sitting on the curb. I see Duty talking shit to the police. <laughs> so boom, when he find the money, he draw down on Duty and them. Then he called for backup. He ain't never seen this amount of money, the law. Nah, he yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? He probably had, but not from, he wasn't expecting it from us. Right. So boom, we go to a little port of little fucking building. This some this some little country shit. Arizona, we in the desert. They asking us questions and stuff. Man, I'm like, bro, I do music. Money London already gone now. Money London already gone. I'm selling puppies. I'm selling shirts. I got my clothing business going. So they asked me what I do. I'm like, bro, I do music, you know, clothes and dogs. These niggas done told them some other shit. So they take us to jail. For some reason, they only had a certain amount of hours to hold us. 
they let us go, but they give us a paper. They like, uh, you know, you got this amount of time to claim this money or some shit about the money or whatever. But we didn't, we didn't have shit. So my bun was like 20 racks, something like that. So I'm calling these niggas like, bro, y'all niggas better get me out of this motherfucker quick. They patching up money. I'm thinking, I think I'm, I think I'm bunded out. I'm not knowing they released me. You know what I'm saying? They, they released me and Duty. Me and Duty take out Walker from the jail. We like, where the fuck is Samad? This nigga Samaj done went back to the impound and stole my fucking... That nigga stole my fucking money out of my bag. He stole my money out of my... He stole my grill. That's what it was. <laughs> this nigga said, I asked him why he... He had like he didn't do it when we got home. He said he had to pawn the grill in order to get home. So me and Duty, we calling people. We get a hotel. I don't even know how we got back home. Oh, we flew back home. I knew some people that had paid for our flight. We had we had flew back home and shit. I had to start all the way over. But matter of fact, when that shit dropped, money laundering wasn't out. Yeah, cause money laundering was about that song. What uh, that money experience? Money laundering wasn't out. Boom. So when I get out, that's when I make the song. When I'm in jail, I'm already rapping in my head. But like, if you do music, you already be having shit in your head to say, like. You know what I'm saying? I'm not recording like that though, and I'm not releasing a lot of music. So nigga, I go to the studio and the song, the fucking beat turn on. And I just get to talking shit. I dropped the audio. They helped me like 10k in a day. Carter called me. Hey, fool, this y'all going crazy. You need to do a video. Shoot the video. And shit, the rest was history. That's when the dog shit picked up, and the video already had dogs. Yeah, and the video was that the and I got spots all that's around eBay like Merle. Or that's before that. No. That's Lil Dura. Yeah, that's Lil Dura. But Lil Dura around the same time. Yeah, I dropped Money Lunder and then I dropped Lil Dura. Okay. Then L I dropped, I dropped like a little tape. Right. But the Lil Dura video, a lot of people don't like. The way I rap, they don't understand it. Right, right. Let, let's pause right here. I was hoping that that, um, all this goddamn me wind and, uh. I told you about you this You told shit. me, but shit, we on the top flow, top dollar. You Come know on. what I'm saying? Um, so you, you drop a song called Lil Dura. And in Ladero, you have, um... On Ladero, I tell them two, three phones because I can't control the traffic. Everybody, everybody know, know I get the pack, pack in. in. Wake everybody up early in the morning trying to get them racks in. I don't even remember what I said. Can't sleep. What I said... I got to get that back in. You hear me? Let me turn that on. Can I turn that on right quick? Yeah, you can turn that on, man. So they can I'm understand what I'm saying when I'm saying this. I'm so going to put it in there. I'm going to put it in there. You know what I'm saying? But uh, wake up in the morning trying to get them racks in. I, I said, ain't eight, but I got to get that back in. You know what I'm saying? I said two, three phones because I can't control the traffic. Everybody know I'm getting the pack in. Wake up early in the morning. On the road trying to get them racks in. I ain't eight because I'm trying to get that back in. Early bird get the worm. No, I can't sleep. Mm -mm. That nigga know that bitch worm from worm. That nigga say Man, can't. Man, I get money for worm music. You hear that me? nigga say can't eat, can't sleep, want money because I'm greedy, baby. Main bitch trying to chip, she ain't Main seen me lately. Main bitch trying to chip, she ain't seen me lately. Catching flights every Kenny week because I'm dedicated. Every week cause I'm ele cause I e catching flights ele cause every I'm week because I, I elevated. That's what nah. I said. Catching flights every week because I'm. Cause I'm dedicated. Yeah, yeah. Mama, you know that whole word from word. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't fuck with thirty. That's your shit right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm See, with a 30. lot of people don't understand that shit. They don't know about no get money music because they not get money. I right. heard. Me. I was too fast for them. Even though, even though we not big, in text with the music shit, people that really listen to music fuck with thirty. You know what I'm saying? And, and we so, and I'm so fast and ahead of them. Regular people don't understand what I'm saying because they not used to hearing this shit around here. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm too. I'm, I'm gone. Right. Right, right. Um, well, in that same song, you feature a Merle, it looked like a micro bully. That's Meech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, Meech wasn't in that song. I just said that in that song. Meech was in Money London. It wasn't no okay. Merle in that song. Right, right, right. But a lot of people wasn't on dogs, so they don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. That, um, you claim that was the first Merle in a DFW, huh? That was the first Merle in the DFW, but he was a pocket. A lot of people... Never seen a mirror. I bought the dog because he was mirror. I didn't know he was gonna be a pocket. So I'm on all this internet shit studying these dogs. I'm seeing people come out with different colors, but I never seen one. When I go to the dog shows, or when I step out, I so you were already them. going to dog shows. I was already going to dog shows. I'm already on all these different apps for dogs, but like this shit is not here. So when I see Meech, it was a lady named Jay Benedict, right? 
Jay Benedict do er, do ears and do crops and do different shit for dogs. She's an older lady, right? So she cropping eBay them ears of a female dog named Sushi, 30 Junior Mama. She cropping they ears. And she say, we talking about dogs. And she say, yeah, I was finna get a mural. I'm like, let me see the mural. She showed me the mural. She's like, but I can't afford it. I say, well, I pay for it. You keep it over there. We boo, we, we co-own it, woo, woo, woo. So you so, was on co-owns back then. Yeah, we how, how are you even getting into dogs? Shit, that's something that I love to do when I'm watching it, I'm studying it. I, I like this shit. I'm seeing, yeah. like I told you, bro, we fucked up in forward work. We don't know shit, do shit. Only thing we know is our hood and our family, and we fuck around getting into it with them niggas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I me sitting on that curb, that's what was $1,500. That dog that I seen coming, coming down that street. I seen different dogs coming, I seen that bully. Right. When I seen that bully, I asked him how much that motherfucker, I asked him how much he was, he said 1500 There wasn't no dogs coming down my street worth 1500 We run around here stealing pits, hiding them in the backyard. Then you see this is worth 1500 Pits going for $100, $50, whatever, woo, woo, woo. So I just started studying and looking into it. Uh, when I graduated, I think I was, I graduated a year early. I was probably 16 or 17. I went and bought me a dog. When Money Learner came out, I was probably 18, 19, about 18, 19 years old. I'm already studying and going to dog shows and breeding dogs and in the breeding. When the lady showed me that Murray and we negotiating a deal, she didn't want it. She turned down the deal. She turned you down? She turned, she turned down the deal of, of keeping the dog. She turned down the deal of keeping the dog as I paid for the dog. Cause I'm telling hey, when you get the dog, I, but I'm, I'm gonna pay for the dog. Whatever you get off the dog, we're gonna split it. Cause she ain't giving no money on the dog. She just housing yeah, the dog. Yeah, she housing the dog. She didn't like that. She like, hey, whatever I get off the dog is mine. I'm like, you ain't even pay for the dog. So I, well, I can't get nothing off that. You know what I'm saying? Everything we do, we gonna split. She didn't want that. She wanted her own shit going on. Get a, man, come so on, boom. man. Uh, I, I, I raise meats, you know what I'm I don't understand them. those breeders who don't come in with no money, but they won't, ha, ha, they don't, they not, not like, ha, come on, half? I we did, ain't asking I didn't too understand much. it either. She like, I don't mind giving you half off the stud fees and stuff like that, but as far as my dog's in-house, okay, I don't want to okay, give you okay, nothing okay, off that of makes it. sense. I'm like, Mr. J. Benedict, you line At least have, first pick. You line to have 20 dogs over there and I don't get nothing off that shit, and I pay for this dog. What she on? What she gonna say? Well, I'm raising a dog. It ain't. It don't take much to raise a dog. You know what I'm saying? We studying this dog out. It's a market. I'm, I'm gonna build the name for the dog, which I did. I built the name for the dog, like I knew I was gonna do. So I don't know. It just didn't work out. I raised the dog. Raised eBay. eBay breed money laundering going. We studied now 1500. Then we went up to 3500. Big meats breeding for 3000. So I got two studs working. Four years ago, you know what I'm saying? When the DFW ain't never seen a, a fucking chocolate mural, or the DFW don't have no bunch of lilac tribes with full tails, you know what I'm saying? It's still around a time that people still got pockets, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't got micros, you know what I'm saying? So I got micros, I got pockets, I got a bunch of different females running around the yard, I'm breeding, I got bait bitches, I'm breeding this shit, I'm producing murals, I'm going out to California, breeding to Mad River, produce 30 George, I'm just breeding. And guys, dog selling, people keep calling and trying to buy dogs and the price is going up and people is bidding and bargaining on different dogs. I get to sell the dogs for 50, 30, 40. Oh, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Shit, we sit back and breed dogs. I wasn't thinking about no music like that. I wasn't thinking about no music like that simply because I'm not understanding the music shit. This me, I'm just rapping about me. You know what I'm saying? I just get on here and talk shit because I've been doing this since I was a kid. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening and I'm, I'm trying to learn it, but I see it's fuckery. It's a lot of fuckery going on because I don't know that game. So I'm stick to what I know, you know what I'm saying? And me, as far as me, my brand, my name, when I want to drop something or release something just off my heart, because I rap off me. I rap how I feel. I can't just go in there and rap and talk and lie and make up shit. I got to feel something in my chest. Like, man, I need to go record something. When that beat come on, I'm going to say some shit that got something to do with me. I'm not just gonna say no shit, so I don't know what to call it for. Right. But I do wanna, you know, keep dropping music after my event. Like, music is me. 
Right. I love music. I can naturally do that. But that's not my just my main focus because I don't know the game. Now, as I get older and build this relationship and throw these festivals and all these cameras and my platform getting bigger, I can release some on YouTube and do some good views because I'm getting bigger around the world. Right. See, the world is what's going to keep you streaming. So as long as you own business and making different business ventures and business partners all around the world, shit, you can give views. You know what I'm saying? A motherfucker got to look at you different in order for them to watch you. They got to look at you like somebody. They not just going to listen to no regular nigga that ain't doing nothing. So I know this work for me, and I know I know how to do this shit to make this shit look right and save my money in the presentation of it, and I don't mind investing when I feel like investing. So that's how we do it. Right. Business. Finesse two times hadn't been out for 48 hours, and the next thing I know, we see 30 Rich done linked up with Finesse, and Finesse has a Frenchie in his hands. Frenchies in his hand. Finesse, come home and get a Frenchie. Everybody trying to get Frenchies and bullets and dogs. Yeah, the Frenchies, I think, had just soared in popularity out of nowhere. Like, the Frenchie just, from my perspective, overtook the bully lane. You know, at first it was, like I say, you, you know, you had the XLs were popular. Then, out of nowhere, the pockets become popular. Then the exotics become popular. Um, the micro exotics become popular. And now you have the popularity of the Frenchie starting to come. You know what I mean? And Finesse is fresh out of jail. Finesse then dropped one of the hardest songs too, by the way. I think he had just dropped that um what what was it? Uh back in? Get even. And uh Get Even, yeah, Get Even had just dropped. Soon as he get out, I'm talking, he he's smashing the gas. And he ends up with a Frenchie, and Lord and behold, goddamn 30 rich again. Goddamn 30 rich again, back in their face again. See that Frenchie, that ain't even no regular Frenchie. The Frenchie that he got. That's a fucking Grinchy. That Frenchie, I paid 10,000 just to breed to that dog's dad, right? What's that, so significant about the Grinchy? The look of it, it look exotic, it look like a monster. It don't look like a regular Frenchie. French, it got more bone, it got more, most, damn near like a bully Frenchie. <laughs> it's more buff, it got a bigger head, it got a different look, it got the, a Zaza the look. Mash. The face mask, it got thicker bone, it got a, it got a structure, it got a pose. That's why Grinchies are what they is. A lot of people don't know about them in Texas because they ain't never been up there. You know what I'm saying? Or they so in tune with what's going on here. See, I'm in tune with everything. I'm getting Grinchies, Frenchies, Bullies, uh, Micros, Lilacs, Chocolates, Blues, Green, whatever it is, I want all flavors of it. So that way, when they see me and they call me, I got whatever you want. So the Grinchy, that probably was my first Grinchy breeding. I bred LeBron James, Mama Annabelle, she was my first ever Frenchie. I bred her to that dog, um, to a Grinchie named Shocker in Northern California. So I drove all the way up there, paid 10,000 for the, for the breeding, and I produced that one Finesse two times got. I produced a black, a black female, and I produced Cowboy. I still got Cowboy. So Finesse two times on Cowboy Brother. Now I'm telling them, Make this page, promote this like this. People finna pay you, fool. This what's going on, this the new dope right here. This nigga look at me and laugh. So I don't know what he did with the dog, if he breeding it. I ain't seen it, you know what I'm saying? I ain't seen it either. I was so, wondering, I, I was like, man, maybe 30 got it right back. I went to Houston and I seen him on stage with a dog, like when they had the money back tour. Right. But I don't know if that was that dog or not, but he might be hiding it somewhere. He really bought the dog. He said he got the dog for his kids. Right. So I don't know if they studying it out or what they doing, but that dog was the shit. That was my that was my first pick. Right. So so oh you gave him the first pick. So how did that come about? Like that whole like 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 feature situation. Like did you you gave instead of paying him, you gave him the dog, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, no. Nah. I paid him for the feature. You know what I'm saying? Uh I know people that know Jay Prince Jr. now. You know what I'm saying? So Finesse two times really supposed to be on Money Laundering, originally. That was the feature that I was gonna put on there, but I'm listening to this off the porch and this crazy ass beat in my head. And the way I hop on this hoe, I'm like, Money Laundering already gone, I need something else to go. So I put him on off the porch. I had, off the porch. Mm, mm, I had just recorded mm, off the porch, mm, you know what I'm saying? So shit, mm, mm, they calling me, telling me Finesse finna get out of jail. Mm, mm, shit, he wants this much for a feature. So I'm like, 
man, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Right. When he get out of jail, they when, before he get out of jail, bro telling me, hey fool, he Junior finna go pick him up in the private jet. You need to be there, shoot that video, you need to drop the shit. Woo 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 woo. Nigga, I sleep on that shit like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out there, I'm gonna come out there. Boom, he get out, they shoot, get even. He dropped that hoe. That's when I can hear up and go out there. We do the dog, we do the feature, and we shoot the video, you know what I'm saying? And from there, shit, we dropped that that damn off the porch, and now they have like six, seven hundred thousand views. Yeah. Um, but Bugatti Casino told me I should have put him on money laundering. He was like, if you'd have put him on money laundering, you'd have been out of here. What you think? You know, I'm a fan of both. I like both. Um, <clears throat> it, it's really hard because my thing with remixes, I think I think you probably would have went far, like. The money but laundering. my my thing with remix, like we heard money laundering, and so unless you move finesse verse first, like I'm not just about to just listen to that whole thing just for that verse, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it was a new song, then I could replace. Okay, okay, the whole, that, That's just me though, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like both ways was a good way. I, look, I like the fact that I you got something new. I listen to all advice, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you record a lot of people, you done met a lot of artists, so your opinion matters, you know what I'm saying? So if you telling me, hey, for on the remix, I don't want to hear the whole song over again, I want to hear something new. That just gave me, you know, game on, hey, bro, when I'm doing, you know, songs, or I'm doing a remix. If I even want to do a remix, do it a certain way, man. I appreciate your love. Yeah, that's 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 how I feel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I I was actually there for the uh, video shoot. Video shoot. Yeah, I remember because I got the call. You know what I'm saying? I'm somewhere in the H. You know what I'm saying? Doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? Being real tuned. I was busy at this time. I was real busy. I think I'm. I had a lot going on. Yeah. But um, you know my my people from O City call me. They say, hey, look, I tune. I'm about to bring the hood out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Finesse got a video shoot. I say, where? Yeah, yeah, some nigga from Fort Worth. Uh, woo, woo, woo. I say, from the murder? He say, yeah. So, you know, you know, they, they, they called me trying to get the background. You know what I'm saying? Oh, what's going on? So I say, um, I say, they shooting it in Mo City? He like, yeah, at the, uh, at the spot. I say, at the, at, at the spot? Fuquay? And, uh, he like, yeah, man, pull up, man, you know where is that? Pull up. So I say, man, I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? They, they like, he like, man, I don't know what time they gonna shoot it, man. You know how that go. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, if ain't nothing going on at nine, so boom, 10 o'clock come. You know what I'm saying? I see, next thing I know, I see Diamond Stone. You know what I'm saying? I, you, know, you know, I got this thing about bloggers coming to my areas. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. blog in the area, you gotta speak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm gonna speak if I'm in your area, at least sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So I see Diamond Stone, I'm Diamond Stone. And that was my first time getting the opportunity to meet him, bro. Cool, he actually a cool guy. I see 30, I'm, oh, now, you know, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? You didn't know it was me. No, I didn't know it was you. I didn't so know, you got they, there? they didn't tell me, um, they, they didn't tell me it was going to be 30 rich until, you, until I got there, like I say, and then I seen you and, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it you know, things transpired. It was a beautiful event though. Beautiful turn of events. I wish I would have had a little more cameo. You know what I'm saying? I should have had a little more, you know what I'm saying? Footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't getting no footage, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the video turk, you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> but nah, man, I'm 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 glad it I'm glad it worked out. Um an another time when I was like, okay, well 30 is really going to the next level with this dog stuff was um when you when you when you purchased the stud fee from king pinky um for those people who don't know king pinky is a one-of-a-kind dog first of his kind um to have two copies of the pink gene and it actually showed visually pink in the united states in the united states right 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 you got to say in the united states you know what i'm saying but the i think it's like california he, he, he really kind of like the first ever have a period but he was for show. See, he's from United Kingdom. He's from the UK. So, ain't the UK like Europe? No, nah, the UK is England. England. So he's from England. I don't know what all they got in England, but I know for show that he was the first to be in the United States. Now I went out there and paid seventeen thousand and bred to the dog before everybody else. Knew I thought about King the dog. Pinky was twenty. He best was twenty, best. but this east to the west shit, they got to fuck with me on something. So I got him for seventeen. Right. Uh, I did the breeding, and um, that's you brought I, a bad motherfucker to him too. You brought a uh, Isabella Murrell Daisy dudes. Yo, but well, I was it carrying Fluffy? She didn't carry no Fluffy. No Fluffy. So what I did was, see, 
this is this how you do it, fool. You gotta line up the, the genetics, right? Right. You breed a fluffy carrier to a fluffy carrier, you might get one only one fluff, right? Mm -hmm. So at that time it wasn't really is it wasn't a lot of Isabella fluffies out. If they was, they wasn't up in age. This in a this is an Right, this right, in, right. This right. is an adult Isabella Murrow, so she already carried two copies of the testable gene. Right. So I'm lining up the GM DNA of hey, I need something that's gonna carry the pink, the testable, and it's gonna be able to throw good structure. That's why I took Daisy to him. Boom, Daisy didn't take it. That's when I bred Cat Lady to him, and that's when I produced Pink 30. So Pink 30 is a visual fluffy Murrow Karen. Have you showed Pink 30? I don't think I've seen Pink 30. Pink 30 been dropping breeds back to back. So he's a blue tri Murrow Karen pink and chocolate. I've been keeping them Testable put- chocolate or? No, just cocoa. Okay. So my plan is to breed him to the females that carry the testable, big ropes that carry the testable, females that carry the pink where I can produce, you know, the next generation of my stuff. You know, Man, I, that's I didn't, tough. See, and, and that, that's my thing with, with breeding, like even with King Pinky, because that 17 bands was a big risk for you. You know what I'm saying? To, to take 17 just off. And for those who don't know, when we speak on stud, you really just speaking on the semen. You know what I'm saying? You're paying for the semen, you're paying to put it in. You know what I'm saying? And then what, I, I think, I, I watched a blog that you did when y'all did it. And it was like, you didn't have, um, you, you weren't prepared for the AI. You know what I'm saying? And they ended up doing the AI or something like that. I've been prepared. I came prepared. Right. So what they what they did was they PG tested and said breed her tomorrow. I think we did the AI that day and the next day, matter of fact. Okay. When she was there, when we came, she was ready. So we did the breeding. It wasn't it wasn't none that I wasn't prepared see, for. See, me, I'm just saying if I spend 17, I'm doing a TCI. I'm not coming in so look, what we did, with the regular AI. I got to at least see it go in. You know so what I'm saying? So we did one AI and a TCI. We did a TCI. What you seen on camera Might was, have to do a surgical for the 17. It depends on her numbers. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So she was her numbers was, was ready for one AI one day and a, uh, and a TCI the next day. So that's what we did. So she got an AI and a TCI done. But she just didn't take. Was there a reason she didn't take her? She, she did take, she had two, she had a miscarriage. Uh, the dumb, my, my vet I be going to, or one of the vets I go to, they had gave up, she was vomiting. She had caught, she had like little parasites. So when she was vomiting, I took her to the vet and they had gave me a pill and they said it was okay for pregnancy. She had confirmed two plus puppies. But when I had gave her that pill, she started dropping blood. She started miscarrying. So that's when I got the credit to Cat Lady and I didn't need the, the DNA for Cat Lady. Cat Lady, I already had a following. She already had people from all over calling her trying to buy her. So I just took her structure with her color and bred it to Pink 30. I mean, bred it to King Pinky and got Pink 30. So Pink 30, he carries the structure, he carries the DNA, and he carries he carries the, the brand. How, how many um how, how many pups did you get off that litter with Cat Lady and uh? Okay, that's cool. I co-owned Cat Lady Chicago for eighty thousand, right? So I get two puppies, he get two puppies. We split the litter. I pick Pink 30 first and his sister Bubblegum, she was a blue with like little tan points on her leg. I just bred her to the one, a big rope, Isabella Rojo male. So she's finna drop big rope, chocolates, Karen Testable and pink. Then I'm gonna take that to the Pink 30 and produce big rope, you know, murals and I'm just doing, I can't tell you everything, but guess no, we got levels on levels on levels. We got all this shit documented and prepared for years and years down the line. Like this right. festival, I've been working on this festival for two years. I'm just not just jumping out here in the blind doing oh, shit. Oh, you're not, you're not. I even saw you last year um, at um, South by Southwest. By the way, we hosted the biggest South by Southwest um, festival, you could say, um, or, or extravaganza. It wasn't no festival, it was extravaganza. Um, on 6th Street, you know what I'm saying? Real Tune brought Texas out, we did do it. And yeah. you were promoting back then. You know what I mean? Um, and because it was several dog shows happening, and people were promoting their dog shows as they were happening. Um, I thought your dog show was that year. Was that year? Because you were promoting it so early. Nah. Yeah. Festival 2023, but I'm already working on it because I like to stay two, three steps ahead and let everybody know. Because I got a lot of fans and people that be tuning in and they be losing contact with me because Instagram be deleting my page. So. Um, I wanted to get out there for the people that was fans of me for the music. Like a lot of people, when I went to South by Southwest, they they quoted my music like you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me not knowing that they on that new shit, that uh, 
that new shit I dropped, uh, what's the name of it? That's the one off the porch, but what they really fuck with is uh, Phil today. How, like how, how Phil did that go? 30 Rich, I get paid plenty of ways. Back and forth making plays on the interstate. Niggas ain't shit like me anyway. Niggas can't sit by me anyway. Now you Pill got that other song too. I feel a day. You, you got that other, uh, I can't think. You know, you don't drop enough to about, keep it all the, uh. You talking about the song with Jada Younger? Nah, 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 or nah, you, nah. Or nah. you talking about the one that say, got it's me a, fucked up, think I'm. Got me, think I'm crazy. Jump up. <laughs> you and say, and say, got me fucked up. Yeah, yeah, Damn. that, 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 the yeah. age. See, when I go in the booth, fool, I just zone out. You hear me? Right. I get on the mic and I talk shit. So, how my songs be going, I don't be really remembering them hoes because this shit no shit talking. that's written down right. that I done rehearsed. I just go in there and, you know, and do art. I just go in there and, you know, make music. You know what right. I'm saying? So, a lot of them songs I don't be knowing, but October 29th, I might be performing on that funk ass. Right. So we about 10, 15 days away. If you're looking for the biggest event in Texas, uh, Top Dollar West Month Festival, brought to you by your boy 30 Rich with D-Baby, No Cap, Big Boogie, South Walker Car Show, Big X the Plug, uh, uh, Lil Jeremy, you know what I'm saying? All in one show, you know what I'm saying? Uh, outside event, all breeds, all dogs are welcome. All reptiles are welcome. Whatever you got, chickens, goats. I got guys calling me saying they bringing horses and zebras. Got callers. Guys calling me saying they bringing chickens. They bringing all different type of animals out. I'm trying to flavors expose the animals to the world. I'm trying to mix right. the animal culture in with the music culture and the car culture. Just like it's a culture for that and a culture for that, it's also a culture for this. You know what I'm saying? Also, I want these fans to go home with a dog. So if you're a breeder, it's a lot of people coming with a lot of money. A lot of people that have been watching me over the years. I've been promoting this for years and years and years to prepare people and get people to have their cars ready, their dogs ready. You know what I'm saying? They bag ready so they can come to the festival and leave with something nice when you are a 18 carry $20,000 pinky ring right here or, or win you a trophy that got top dollar first festival with the briefcase in the middle and, and, and diamonds on it and shit. You know what I'm saying? Everything right. I'm doing, I'm, I'm putting extra into. I've been doing this for two years. You know how much two years of promotion costs? Mm. Costs a lot. You know what I'm saying? When you on the lot. radio and you passing out flyers at every event, that shit ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? When you having people make flyers each one of those flyers, them, them people see me post, them flyers cost me $100. And I've been posting this shit and promoting it for two years. Right. All different breeders. I'm making them flyers. Hey, bro, I'm going to make you a flyer. You bringing the dog. You bringing the dog, send me a picture of your dog. I'm going to make you a flight. So I'm, I'm spending that money that they're going to have to pay to get get in. That's the money I had to spend for them a fly. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. I've been, I've been, you know, trying to give back and support the supporters and support the culture of people that, you know, want to, be into this or want to learn it or be in the animals because I know real tune I ain't see you with no dog until I got a dog for some reason no nah, no nah, see I, I had a before you even drop money laundering I already had a pocket that's how I'm on that's how I'm on your music okay because okay, I'm okay. already in the dog game so, that's what a lot of people don't know I've been had litters so look but see I had a pocket let me say and something I, and I bred them with an XL this before you know what I'm saying this before the exotics took so, off there, there wasn't even dog Man, I brought a dog to North Dallas. Yeah. You hear me? Let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah. So you saying the dog breeding exposed you to my music? The dog breeding definitely gave, made That's me look made at you get it. Because the my dog music. was hard. So I'm look, like, this is another thing. I'm looking at the dog. A lot of people don't know, like, when you're doing different shit, it brings different shit. A lot of the breeders from other states didn't know I do music. But me having that dog, it created streaming revenue for me. People started listening to my music. People started looking further into me. So you gotta have different shit going on because right. it bring different people, different audiences. And now we here we are today. That dog created me on my boy Real Tune yeah, platform. This had to be 2020. This when, was 2019. When you when you seen the money launder shit? I, I, Cause I, I got my dog around, 20, I was still on Snapchat. This was 2018, this before Real Tune. That's what I'm saying, like this is before and the dog shit is, this was what's creating us the opportunity to do this right. video and, and show the world how big this dog shit is, man. It can connect you with all different mm -hmm. types of people.
people. Right. So if you don't have a dog, bro, get you a dog. You lost. Yeah, if you don't, yeah, if you animal, don't a dog, you, you, the, the you, dog you is lose. the new shit. The dog is the new drill. It's gonna get you women. It's gonna get you everything. Whatever you're looking for, you. you it's it's gonna get on, you a man. plug. The dog, she gonna get you a plug. <laughs> it's all for real. You know I'm man. saying, I don't care if you got your Belgium. You know what I'm saying? You get whatever dog you got. You know, people are in the dogs. Fool. I, I, I definitely had um a question. I, I saw you started um the Top Dollar Kennel franchise. You know what I'm saying? So you got top dollar uh, kennels in different states. I, I know um, y'all heavy in California with Westmont. Um, I think what you got, Ohio, Oklahoma. What, what all I states got, do you have I a got franchise? It. Let's do it, let's do it. Let's, let's think about it, because it's a lot. Okay, well, let's start from the top. What is a franchise? A franchise. A dog franchise, I think. A, a franchise, when you get a franchise, because it's different types of if different type of businesses that you can start with me, you know what I'm saying, branched off. A franchise is an ownership in my business, a Top Dollar Kennels, your own branch. So you're an owner of your own branch of Top Dollar Kennels, you know what I'm saying? Top Dollar Kennels is a worldwide known kennel. And when you franchise, you own your own branch of the kennel wherever you at. And I show you how to build that branch, how to promote that branch, how to create revenue off that branch, how to get your branch known like I am, you know what I'm saying? So when you buy the branch, it's damn near like if you go buy a McDonald's and go put it in your hood, people are already coming because people know McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? They're going to pull over when they see the McDonald's sign. This is something that's already known. So when you franchise, you buy a business that's already up and running and known and creating revenue from around the United States. You know what I'm saying? So when you get that franchise, I'm going to show you how to breed these dogs. I'm going to show you what to buy. I'm going to show you what not to buy, I'm gonna show you how to whip them, I'm gonna show you how to take care of them, I'm gonna show you what to feed them, I'm gonna show you how to keep them clean, make them pretty, stack them nice, I'm gonna show you how to get in front of the world and make the world follow you and spend money with you on your dog or look into your dog, because a lot of breeders that's got camps, they might not, they not gonna look at you if they don't know you. Now, when you top dollar kennels, they have no choice but to, who is that, you know what I'm saying? So it's creating you a face card and building you a face card in a dog breeding community. How much is it if somebody wants to franchise with you? The franchise is $20,000, but I also have memberships programs where you can be a top dollar kennel member. You can still be top dollar kennels, but you just don't have an LLC and EIN number. See, the franchise, it comes with an LLC, EIN number, and it comes with me promoting your dogs for a percentage, right? But when you a member, I get an even larger percentage. See, at the beginning, when you franchise, you got an LLC, EIN, and I ain't get none of the, the, the money from selling your dogs for you. But as it got bigger, I had to change up the contract. Like the brand is growing, a lot of people buying dogs, a lot of people looking at us. So if I'm selling something, I, I want a little percentage off of it. Cause I really don't, I really don't need, you know, no extra members. So I gotta, I gotta change up the contract cause it's more stuff, you know, it's bigger. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the, when you, you can be a top dollar kennel member, and you don't get an LLC EIN number, you just get the social media platforms, basically. And you're a member of Top Dollar Kennel. Wherever I go, these franchise members and these members and these and these people that got memberships with Top Dollar Kennels, they go with me. You know what I'm saying? They get the same knowledge I have as far as the top dogs, what's in style, what's not in style, what to breed to, what's not to breed to, what's producing, what's not. You know what I'm saying? Knowing because a lot of people don't know what's on the other side of the world. We know what's coming out before it even come out. Right. We get deals from a lot of breeders, a lot of people don't charge me to breed to their dog because of the platform I have. You know what I'm saying? They, and then the people that franchise me, they get my same discount deals. They get percentages off on my studs if they want to use them, just all different type of stuff. And then you got action at investing into the festival. You got action at throwing your own event in your own city. So it's different streams of income that you can get from franchise. A lot of my franchise member in Virginia, he done, he done made him a, a store. He got an actual feed store out there where he's selling dog food and leashes and collars and, and whelping boxes and cages uh, in Roanoke, Virginia. So we got franchise. Salute to Roanoke. Salute to them. And then they got some high quality dogs. They steady breeding Frenchies. I hooked them up with somebody that give me Frenchies for cheap, cheap, cheap. Now they buying them and they put them in their store and they sell them in Roanoke, Virginia. You know what I'm right. saying? So when you, when, you, when you get a franchise or membership of Top Dollar Kennels, it further your knowledge in business in different ways to stream and generate income. But we got people in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, so we got Roanoke, Cincinnati. We got Steubenville, Virginia. We okay. got Daytona Beach, Florida. We got uh, Brook City, Florida. We got uh, Flint, Michigan. 
we got Milwaukee, we got uh uh I said Cincinnati, I said Cincinnati, Ohio, we got Weatherford, we got uh Houston, uh we got Atlanta. We at eleven right now. We had we, we got Atlanta, we got uh we had somebody in Waco, you know, uh what else we got? What do you mean had? San Antonio. You can it lose a, your membership? If you if I'm if I'm telling you what to do, you can't. Well you can, but it's no purpose of you franchising with us if you're gonna go do what you wanna do. So the guy who got the the guy who got the franchise, right? He started hitting up other breeders trying to go buy stuff, right? And I'm telling them, hey, bro, that's not a high-quality dog. That ain't a good-quality dog. That ain't what you need to go be buying right there. He steady. Well, this is what I want, and this is how I want to do it. And I'm like, okay, if you get it, I can't promote low-quality shit. So it's like you doing your own thing. What was the purpose of you franchising with us if you trying to run your own plays and go buy low-quality dogs and breed them together? And you, you're not listening. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm telling you, that's not what that is, you know what I'm saying? And I can't promote it like that because it's low quality and you telling me, well, I paid you to franchise with you, you supposed to promote whatever I have. No, my job is to fast forward your program and show you how to do this right, where you can have generations of quality dogs, not just buy a dog and come use my stud and create some low quality puppies and want me to sell them for you. You can create your own kennel if you want to, you know? He asked me about shows, like, well, we going to this show, well, I'm gonna go to this show. I'm like, hey, bro, we need, if we go to a show, our presentation needs to be right. We need to go all go together. You know what I'm saying? So he went to hitting up people from China, trying to buy dogs from them and talking shit and sending pictures and videos of him burning the top dollar kennel shirt. He said he don't, no longer want to do it. So shit, he was, you know, he went his own way. You know what I'm saying? I can't be mad at him for that. He trying to tell me the best dogs are in China and talking about Dax blood and asking me questions about older dogs, I'm telling them, hey, bro, that shit don't matter no more. You know what I'm saying? It's a new generation of dogs. It's a new look. It's new shit going on. And this shit is working for everybody. I'm trying to tell you how to work. You trying to tell me to change my shit around and do it how you want me to do it. So shit, he went about his way. Respectfully. But uh, what other what other states we got? You left off at San Antonio. New York, New we York City. New York. We got New York City. Uh. We got people that, we got French House, he really from Fort Worth. We got uh, Gray Day, he from Fort Worth. Uh, we got, a, we got a, you know, about 15, 20 members. I had some people in, uh, I had some people in uh, Massachusetts. Right. Boston. In, in, in the in the the to my understanding, the the top dollar membership comes with like a a, a, a female co owner It don't situation. come with, a, it don't come with a dog, but you know, if I got a dog and you, you want to buy or you want to co-owner or you want to get in on it, like San Antonio, what he did was I had to keep a female and I gave him a deal on her. You know what I'm saying? I was going to keep her. He co-owned her with me. Other than that, it don't come with a dog. I'm going to show you what dogs to go buy. So if you got 20000 and you got a dog, I can work with that. Like Houston, she gave me 20000 She already had a dog. I just showed her what to breed to it and help her sell the puppies. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, you you get your franchise is 20 but you still need further money to invest in buying your dogs, you know what I'm saying? Or, or getting your dogs, uh, doing breedings. I don't mind helping people like Boston. He was like, bro, I only got 10 right now and I'm gonna give you another 10 to buy Honey Boo. Okay, cool, when you gonna give me another 10? I'm gonna give it to you within 90 days. He stopped paying. So his, his contract was terminated because he didn't pay off his, he didn't pay off his, his franchise and then he wasn't breeding, you know what I'm saying? So. The dog was coming in heat. I'm telling him like, hey bro, I got this festival coming up. You know, I got shit I need to pay for. I need to re remain in balance. And he keep acting like he gonna pay for it. See what he had. When he bought Honey Boo, he bred or had some puppies and he said he was gonna give me the money then. So he sold the puppies and and, fu and fucked off the money. So you ain't even handling your business. You didn't finish off your, your franchise. I'm telling you, hey bro, I need the money to finish off your franchise, you know, payment so we can go forward with doing your right. vlogs. You know, doing your, your YouTube, doing your Instagram promotion, all your promo. So, a lot of people that get the franchise think they just finna give me 20 and sit back. No, you still gotta work. Like Flint, when he got his franchise, 
he went to buying dogs and doing breeds, I can promote that. You know, we can go to different states and promote us looking at dogs. But if you just buy a franchise and just sit back, it's like, you, you want me to do all the work. You know what I'm saying? And you're not investing into your brand. A lot of people don't know. I'm, I'm way more invested in dog breeding than I have received, but it still got me here to this day. You know what I'm saying? So it's creating long-term income, not right quick income. I don't mind investing into long-term income. You know? How, how much money would you say you've invested total into dog breeding? I can't even say. Millions of dollars. Millions? Like multiple M's? I'm buying dog for 20, 30, 50. I'm doing $20,000 breeds. I'm doing 5,000 breeds. I'm and you believe in it that much? Because right now, um, with, with dog breeding, it's like a drought. You know what I'm saying? Like the market is low. You might could come up on some fluffy blood for the low. Whereas last year around this time, when Boosie was getting in the fluffy game, fluffy was about 100000 You know, right now, you could probably get your fluffy for 30 20 You know what I'm saying? And so, like, how do, do you still feel like the dogs is viable? Like the dogs is still like, you know the what I'm saying? The dogs are still valuable because... Valuable. And when I say valuable, I mean like, like they still going. You can still make your money back. You can still get a big return. You know what I'm saying? It's still smart for a breeder to jump in the game right now, as it was two years ago. Dog breeding creates multiple doors. You know what I'm saying? This dog breeding, dog market might be down, but I'm still finna throw an event that can create me half of what I invested back. If you spending four, five hundred thousand on a festival. Ain't no telling how much you gonna make all these people watching you on YouTube. So we just gotta invest the money and see what it do. You know what I'm saying? Now it's on the it's on the coach and the crowd and the people that's viewing to come out and support the event to see it, you know, see it, the animals and the dogs and the, you know what I'm saying, see the cars and want to come back next year. So yeah, I've invested that, but after the first festival, it's gonna be another festival. After the second festival, it's gonna be a third festival. After the third festival, we can move it to Atlanta, we can move it to Austin, we can move it to Houston, we can move it to California. So I invested it, you know what I'm saying, I might be down right now, but that don't mean that it won't catch up. Like, you can breed a dog, right? Have six puppies, all of them die. And you have one left, all of them die except for one. You know, you spend how much money on this breed, you done spent so much money on her previous breed when she didn't take. She finally took, had six puppies. Five of them died, you got one left. You raised that puppy. And next thing you know, that puppy worth triple what you invested on her. So it's the stay down that's valuable. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what them dogs can produce you. Because this shit is mother nature. You know what I'm saying? Look at me. Tune. Wake up. You hear me? Yes, sir. It could be a bitch, right? You can buy her as a puppy. Cause you like the blood or cause you like the way she look, right? Right. 10 months, a year down the line, two years down the line, you breed her, she creates you six puppies. And you didn't even expect her to throw six puppies. You didn't expect her to throw eight puppies or whatever she threw. You raise them puppies, they get old, they looking crazy. You done bred her to a stud with a demand that's producing crazy dogs. People are offering you 20,000, 30,000. The market could be up by then. So it's the stay down that count. This, this shit ain't nothing but three pieces of the pie. It's mother nature for one. Nobody knows what those dogs, what colors those dogs gonna throw. You can line up the genetics and hope for, hey, I can hope this. But then nobody know that cat lady was gonna come out with, with two faces. You know what I'm saying? A, a Merle side and a black side. A young boy and them trying to buy the dog and, 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 and Chief Keep and them trying to buy the dog. Everybody trying to, EST and them trying to buy the dog. So it's still valuable. You got rappers hitting you up trying to buy this dog. Cat lady mama was a regular black tribe. Right? Right. Nova. My first ever fluff, I bred her to a fucking lilac tri named Coderbur out of Houston. Cat Lady is a black tri dog that just happened, so happened to come out with two different, a split in her face, Merle on this side, black on this side, and be owned by me. If anybody else owned Cat Lady, she probably wouldn't be what she is. She wouldn't have got co on for no 80. She's a black Merle. It's the, it's the, promotion behind it you know what I'm saying it's mother nature and it's calculation Nova has six puppies I bought Nova for fucking eight thousand dollars right 
Cole on Cat Lady for 80 grand, right? Cat Lady brother, other Cat Lady brother sold for 20. That's already a hundred. I bought it off eight, eight thousand dollars, right? Right. Other little puppies off the litter. She has six puppies. I think one of them passed. So five puppies. I sold two of them for a dub. I know for sure. And I probably sold the other one for like eight thousand. So I, I, I got six figures off of eight thousand dollar investment. So here, yeah, it's still valuable. Cause it's not in our hands. It's God hands on what you gonna produce. If this bitch gonna have a big little, small little, if she gonna take what color she gonna throw, how the market gonna go, how the universe is, how the how the culture of breeding is. This w shit like would you since, since you've been in the game, you've been in the game long enough to know, is it more valuable to be in the stud game or to get females? Depends on who you are. Now then you ask it, you know what I'm saying? I need that. You know what I'm saying? So it depends on who you are and how you promote it, how your brand is, how they look at your game. Because one nigga can have a badass dog stud. This motherfucker bad. But he don't go to no dog shows. He don't come out of Texas. He don't leave out of Eastwood. So don't nobody know he got the dog. Now, it could be somebody on the West Coast, a number one breeder or a big name breeder that get that same dog and post it. And he get 20 lock-ins in one day at 1,500. You know what I'm saying? 20 times 1,500, what's that? Uh, it's above my math grade. 15, about 30, 25, that's about... Uh, 25, $30,000. Yeah, that's about 30, 30, yeah. $30,000 in one day yeah. off lock-in. So imagine if he got it for five days. He opened them up for 30 days or something, and he got lock-in after lock-in. So it depends, all depends on who got the dog. See, me... I got a brand and I got an image and I got some I got a lot of people tuned into me. So if I get a good high quality stud, I can make whatever, whatever, a day or a week or a month. But if somebody that hasn't built their brand and not going to dog shows and not promoting itself, that's why I created the festival. For people that got dogs or got puppies or got different type of animals and trying to sell these animals or trying to ex expose these animals to the breeding com community and culture, but they don't know where to go. It's right. people coming from all over to this festival. It's all different type of people. It's rappers coming that might buy your dog for twenty, thirty thousand dollars at the show, ten thousand. You got car culture people that might buy your dog just because everybody out here with a dog. Hey, let me get a dog. You got people that's watching on YouTube that's coming because they've been watching Thirty Rich with dogs. So the the thing is the reason why I invested so much in this event for everybody can you know experience it, have a good time, and we keep doing this annually for the culture and the community. Right. Um, Final question though, pigeons. You recently uh, partnered up with Westmont um, out of California and got into the pigeon game. And I've been doing a little research on pigeons, reptiles and whatnot. Um, and I see pigeons, you know, me and my little brother, we used to breed like lizards and snakes and shit like that. So, you know what I'm saying? We, this, this, you know, you know it, Ironically, so, this is so really some animal, shit. So the animal, so you saying the animal culture, the, the animals got you, you know, meeting all different type of people, making all different type of money, creating all different type of images because of the animals. Like, right. you naturally love animals and it's opening doors for you, right? Right, right, absolutely. Um, I, I see you with the pigeons and with Westmont. Why, why did you go that direction? Because that's so... I don't I, like I say like I understand like if you would have went reptile, you know what I mean. Like, I went that's reptile kinda, too, but you know what I'm saying. I went but pigeons is more like that's not our lane. I don't feel like. What as African American? Yeah. You can say it's not our lane, and that's what makes it so valuable. Listen to me. what makes it so valuable because what you said right there, it's not our lane. Me, I can get some. Exposed into the our lane, and they gonna want to get into it. So it's about doing something that a lot of people in our lane don't do. It's for right. like the dogs. People went on dogs like that till thirty came out, right? You can, you can say that, especially in Fort Worth. What well, down south? Yeah, you, you can say generation. that. You can literally say you were one of the pioneers. Now that I think about it, you've been thinking about it. I'm just I'm a, I'm in the Frenchie, so it's different. You know what I'm saying? 30, I don't feel like 30 really made now, a now he in the difference. In the, yeah, because like I said, I was on, when you came out with your, with, with money laundering, I was already into dogs. Like I can, I'm going to show you the, when we finish this, I'm going to show you 
my photos with dogs. You're going to see. Yeah, people been bringing dogs all over the saying? world. Back, back when True Religion was popular, I was on dogs. But 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 but, but these type of dogs, we're talking about a certain type of dog. Yeah. Like bullies, that's an era of dogs. In Texas, especially Texas. So you were one of the first, I feel like, in the bully game. You know, Frenchies, I can't give you that. You, you had a Frenchie before me? I don't, I don't know if I had one before you, but. When did you get a French? My first Frenchie, I got my first Frenchie like two years ago. Almost three years. Scholar Chanel was my first Frenchie. But I'm just saying. That's when you started Real Tune. Nah, Real Tune had been going on for a year because I had to be able to afford Scholar. Okay, so, Scholar. Boom. Uh, Boom. But that's just Frenchies, though. Me I ain't saying you, you didn't have them before me. I'm just saying I got you, you I got you. You know, we all doing this. Is we know yeah. we doing business. We yeah. on business. Big you know business. what I'm saying? So East the pigeons. What got me into the pigeons, because our coach and our community don't know about it. So I got I to gotta be the one to invest in this shit, to learn this shit, to show this shit, right? Right. Westmont is somebody that I had already did business with. You know what I'm saying? On the dogs. On the dogs. I had bread with them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we rocking. You know what I'm saying? We rocking tough. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he started the pigeon franchise. He's showing all different type of income coming up off of it in different ways that you can create income as I'm talking to him before I got my franchise. So now I own 50% of the business. What's my performance? But before then, I just, I bought into the franchise to learn it. I know him as an individual. He stand on business, he do business, he into animals and he into dogs and he into what I'm into. So, you know, I feel comfortable investing in with him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing that they getting money in China, Belgium, uh, Africa. See, dogs is just big in the United States majority. And some people doing it in China, some people doing it in the United Kingdom, and some people doing it in different, you know, different countries. A little, pocket a little bit, a little yeah. bit. But bird breeding is an international, it's an international sport that we don't even know about. Like, the Chinese people, they're getting millions of dollars off racing pigeons. Whether they're racing them or whether they're breeding them, or uh, it's just different ways to stream new income off of it. That's why I'm investing into it so I can learn it. I'm a man of entrepreneurship. You know what I'm saying? I'm in an investing and entre being an entrepreneur and opening different businesses and doing different stuff. So boom, the, the racing pigeons. I'm looking at bro promoted. Uh, he he tells me you can have babies every 10 days. Woo, woo, woo. So as I invest into it, I learn more about it. I'm going to races where it ain't nothing but white people and Chinese people in here and we the only black people so it exposed me to a different culture of people you know that's just like with the dogs I wouldn't have never got this big if I didn't even get into it so it's the same thing so I'm like man I'm finna invest in this and I'm finna do the same thing with the dogs that I did same thing with the birds that I did with the dogs you know get in it learn it study it and, 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 and succeed off of it see the birds they not like the dogs. They less of a house and a rouse, less maintenance. The birds, they don't, you don't gotta whip them. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a heat stroke from walking down the street. They don't have bad genetics. Uh, they lay eggs every 10 days. Other than the dog, you gotta have a, 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 a litter every six months and you gotta How do pay you even like keep up with you don't have to whelp the, the pigeon. I mean, but like if you let a pigeon off and you racing pigeons, how you know which pigeon is your pigeon? See, the pigeons, they have labels on their legs. Okay. See, when you send your pigeon to a race, you send it with a band on it, right? And when they get their band, kind of, they give them a band with a, with a chip in it. As they flying back into the loft, it kind of like that, but it got like a laser on it. And as they flying into the holes, their laser is standing their leg in that chip and they updating the computer who coming in at what times. That's when they receive the prizes. First place might get, and the, they got different million dollar races, $500,000 races, $200,000 races. They got local club races for people that just race in your city where you might only pay $100 to enter and win 50 grand or something like that. So it's different categories and different types of races all around the world, you know what I'm saying? But as far as Westmont performance, we do big rank one loft sport races, you know what I'm saying? Where it's kind of a tournament and it's million dollar prizes. So how they, how they, how they break down the money is off of, say they got a thousand birds, the top 200 might get paid. It's different, it's different, and you can send multiple birds, so it's different chances you have to win. Before that final race where you win the big money, they have a tournament. You get paid for the tournaments too, so if your birds are doing good during the tournaments, you also get paid for that. So you send this bird to a race, right, at a young age. 
Now the home and birds, their their instinct is to go home. Like if I had a racing pigeon right now that I had since a baby and I let it go right here, it's gonna be on my roof by the time I get home. Or it might take an hour, it might take two hours, it might take a day, depending on if the bird take a rest or not. But it's gonna go home. That's what the bird is, it's a homing pigeon. So the genetics and the birds that we're buying as far as racing pigeons, we're buying the genetics of birds that are one first place, second place, high power, genetics that's proven to win and breeding that's proven to work. Whether it's a bird that produce winners or it's a blood that produce winners with a certain blood or, or however you got it, just like a dog. Everybody know when you got two copies of pink, when you breed it's gonna pass on one copy. So just like with the birds, if you breed black power to the to the to the to the Aztec bird or to the uh to different types of birds that's proven to work, it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause these birds have already proven to work. To work. So all you gotta do is buy the high power genetics. See Westmont, he had already been studying this two years before I had franchise. So he know who got the birds and he know the genetics the genetics that are winning it's a it's a it's a website called win companion they have the the races on there now when you click on the race you see you come in first second third place and they might send they might have the 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 bloodline on there or they might have they might have where what loft the bird came from like aztec known to win uh it's different breeders that i can't think off the top of my head right now because i haven't been deep in the birds, you know, right now. I've been so focused on the festival, but it's different. It's different breeders that always win. When them breeders go win, their birds stock goes up. Like if Aztec goes send a bird and they go win, all the breeders from around the world are gonna call and say, hey, I want one of those birds. I want something off that bird. The stock of the bird, the nest mate. See, a bird only have two to three eggs. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes one egg. But as them genetics are winning, the 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 value of those birds are increasing. As they're constantly winning, the value increases. When you send your bird to a race and it win, some of those races auction off a bird right after. So you might win six figures off a race, and then they auction during the auction. See, so you can buy your bird back as you bidding, say the bid get up to 100,000, you might, you only have to pay 50. You can buy your bird back at half whatever the bid came up to be, or you can just sell it. So you don't want off the race, you don't, uh, you don't want off of uh, the, 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 the bid, the, the auction, and you got babies off of it to where people finna call you and try to buy babies. So if you got a bird laying three eggs or two eggs, you know, every 10 days, so what's that? six eggs six six eggs a month so you got four months and they land them i mean you got four weeks you got 30 days if they land every 10 days that gives you three clutches they don't have they don't call them litters they call them clutches that gives you three clutches a month so you got 20 to 30 eggs right am i correct right three times 10 that's 30 or 20 eggs if your genetics are winning and you've got these birds going for 10 thousand or five thousand or twenty five hundred you got thirty times twenty five hundred thirty times fucking five thousand or six thousand whatever the value of the bird is they got some birds that are worth millions of dollars to where a baby off of the 25 grand 50 grand 100 grand or whatever they got sites online where you can go bid on these genetics so it's something that was interesting you know something that i never heard of just like the dogs that i wanted to get into because i know that it was it's a lot of people creating you know, lump sums and large sums of money off of the racing pigeon. And I also wanted to learn how to breed them. You know what I'm saying? How to raise them, how to send them to a race. You know, just like when you said you used to breed lizards and geckos, same thing. But I got a cheat code. When I perform, when I when I when I join Westmont Performance, I got a cheat code. When you get a when you get a franchise, a Westmont Performance franchise, you get the Birds, you come with two birds. Your, your franchise come with two birds. You get the the knowledge on how to breed them, what to breed with what, what's winning, and you get the relationships, the plugs. Hey, go get this bird from him. Or hey, let's go pull up on his yard and get some birds. See, a lot of these breeders, they don't breed a lot. You know what I'm saying? They only breed for the races. Right. 
So they already winning, they were genetics are working, they breeding for them to go in. So the other breeders not gonna allow you to come buy one of their two birds that got this genetics that's proven to work. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got a super bag. A lot of people don't don't have the the the, the mind to go find out who got the good birds. Westmont and I already built a relationship with these people, spent over three, four hundred thousand buying high quality genetics, uh, litter mates and nest mates to, to birds that I want six figures, daughters to birds that I want six figures. So you're getting a blueprint. You're getting the LLC EIN, you're getting two birds, um, and we're gonna help you with your birds, you know what I'm saying? So this festival is gonna go on, then after the festival, guess what I'm on? Right back to the birds. See, I haven't been promoting the shit out of the birds because I've been so in tune on festival. But I'm already into the birds to where I can do a breeding and have some babies and send them out to a race. And I line to get 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 grand. Something that you didn't ever heard of. Boom, I go and win. I put up my check and show you I won $50,000 or $100,000 and show my bird. Guess what you gonna do? What? Gonna go buy a bird. How you do that? How 30 doing that? What I gotta do what? See, I built the loft that was $35,000. I had about 20 birds in there, right? You don't have to do that. See, if you want to get in it and you just interested in it, want to learn it, want to get one or two birds, 2,500, we got birds for that. 1,500, we got birds for that. 5,000, we got birds for that. You can get you a $300 bird cage. I got some birds in my mama house in her garage. In a $300 cage, it holds 16 birds. You pair those birds up, you let them get a little older, send them to that race, and you make your bag. Like I said, you can go to a club race that ain't nothing but $100 or whatever the stipulations of the race is and enter race and still win good money. And, and, and how much did you pay to join the franchise? I paid 20000 I think, to join the franchise. And then for your co-ownership? I gave him fifty grand to co-own 50% of the Westmont performance. Well, you, you know what I'm saying? Best of the best. And I'm still learning it, but at the same time, I pay for this already where I can, I can look, I can further my knowledge in this or pace it how I want. You know what I'm saying? I'm an owner in this, and not only am I owner in it, it's like I got different stuff going on now. I pay for it. Like if you franchise, there's no expiration date on your franchise unless you just completely stop. You know what I'm saying? Unless you completely just out, just wasting everybody's time. You ain't, you know. You're not, you're not in tune or doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? Long as you're doing good business and you don't bash the brand or make the brand, brand look bad by selling sick animals, sick dogs, right. or, or fucking up the shit, you good, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can come franchise with the guys, man. October 29th, the Top Dollar Westmont Festival, man. I'm getting cotton mouth. I done talked my ears off, but oh, we're having a huge... We're having a huge festival, October 29th, Dallas, Texas, the Top Dollar Westmont Festival. All the biggest breeders in the USA will be there, you know what I'm saying? Um, whether they breeding all different types. I'm thinking about bringing out some pigeons, Sauce Walker bringing out all different type of cars, Lynn Garage, Turkey Leg Hut, different type of other food trucks. I've got food truck slots. Artists have started locking in the performance. we got performance slots on the second stage. If you want to perform for 500, you can come perform at the Top Dollar Westmont Festival. Um, if you're a clothing vendor, if you're a shoe vendor, you can't get you a $500 vendor booth. Car slots are only $250. I got $5,000 grand prize with the best overall car. We got free activities, toys, games, giveaways for the kids, free haircuts, face paint, bounce houses, all different type of animals. It's going to be a good time in Dallas, man. We're trying to bring the city together, man. This ain't never been done before. 30 Rich again. Hey, real tone, it's some real money in the room.